So let's say you've been dumped and your ex is what they call an avoidant attachment style person. In other words, she keeps everyone at arm's length as a way of preventing her from getting hurt because she learned at a young age that the best way to prevent getting hurt is to never let anybody in too close. But how do you get an avoidant ex back to you? That's what we're talking about today in this video. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from divorcedparentsclub.com and I'm glad you're here with me. So first people want to know, does no contact work with an avoidant ex? Let's identify exactly what I mean when I say no contact. What I mean is that after you've been dumped, you don't initiate any contact with them whatsoever. You're not calling, you're not texting, you're not emailing, you're not stalking them on social media, you're certainly not commenting or liking anything on social media. If you're connected with them whatsoever. It's basically that you're pretending they don't exist and you want them to feel that. You want them to feel that you've pulled completely away and your energy is no longer there with them. You want them to feel that because only when they feel that, especially with an avoidant ex, that's when they can learn to start trusting again. And then trusting again can lead to them redeveloping their feelings of affection and love for you. But they have to get that trust back first. If you do do hear from them, you do definitely want to respond to them in most cases, but not in every case. And I do cover that in greater detail in a recent video that I've done, and you'll see a card for it up here on the screen. Because there is one particular situation where you don't want to respond even if they reach out to you. Now, under normal circumstances, people say to go no contact for anywhere from like 45 to 60 days. But if you're talking about an avoidant ex, the process can actually take much, much longer. And I'm gonna get into how long a little bit later in the video, but just know that you're in for a long haul and you've got to be patient and you've got to avoid the urge to break no contact when you haven't heard from her. You've gotta let this play out if you have any chance whatsoever of getting her back. So how do you get avoidance to reconnect with you? Well, when an avoidant breaks up with you, it is likely because they felt smothered, they felt like they'd lost all their freedom, they felt controlled by you, even if you weren't controlling, I can almost guarantee you they felt controlled, especially if your attachment style leans toward the anxious attachment style, which is kind of what I tend to gravitate towards, especially if I'm with a woman who has an avoidant attachment style like my ex-wife. So when you have an anxious attachment style and they have an avoidant attachment style, they pull away because they feel smothered and they can feel smothered and controlled very easily, very quickly. You don't actually have to do a lot to make them feel that way. And that's on them. It's not on you. But often when you're an anxious attachment style person, you want to pull tightly and hold on when you feel them pull away. It's scary for us as anxious attachment style people because we have an innate fear of getting dumped. We have a fear of abandonment. And when they pull away, it triggers that in us. And our natural first inclination is to try and hold on to them. And then when we try and hold on to them, it makes them pull that much further away, that much faster and that much harder. And then when you have that cycle, repeating over and over and over again, especially over a course of weeks or months or especially years, if you've been married, that can just overwhelm an avoidant attachment style person to the degree where they completely fall out of love with you. Maybe they even start to develop feelings for someone else and then they kind of monkey branch to that other person right from you and it almost feels to you as if you never existed. You question whether they ever really loved you or not at all because it feels so sudden that you just don't understand it. And that was the situation when my ex told me in April of 2021 that she wanted a divorce and by March of 2022 we were done. The ink was dry on the divorce decree and she'd already moved on at that point with this guy that she's known for seven years that was basically a family friend and to me I felt completely blindsided. I felt completely shell-shocked. Had no idea that this was coming but for her as an avoidant attachment style person she'd probably been feeling this way for a while. Now it's on her that she wasn't communicating that to me and as an anxious attachment style person, I'm sure that I was holding on too tightly. And I didn't know about attachment styles at the time. I learned about it after I got dumped. And now I've immersed myself in the concept so that I don't repeat these same mistakes with future relationships. But to get an avoidant attachment style person to reconnect with you, you've got to give them space. You can't smother them 
whatsoever. And if you do anything that feels needy or clingy or smothering, it's going to push them away. It breaks their trust. It makes them scared, makes them fearful that if they come back to you, they're going to lose their freedom. As Maya Angelou says, love in such a way that the other person feels free. In other words, let them do whatever they want to do. Now, if they do things that are outside of your comfort zone or that go against your boundaries or your values, then you're incompatible in that way. And you may want to decide that this isn't a good relationship for you. So that's a different question for a different video though, but you've got to let them be free to be themselves and to do whatever it is that they want to do. Only then will they feel that level of trust come back up and they'll begin to love you again if you're showing signs of attractive behavior. So what are those signs of attractive behavior? Well, for starters, you've got to focus on yourself. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but you've got to focus on being the best version of you that you can be. So if you've neglected your body, get back in the gym, get back in shape, go to yoga, do whatever. If you've been tense and stressed out and quick tempered, get into something like meditation, but yoga is also good for that too, or martial arts, anything like that that helps you develop a better mind and mindset and physical body is all going to help you be a better person. Then get back to your hobbies, get back to hanging out with your friends, do things that bring you joy, and then that joy will naturally permeate everything else that you do. And when you are happy, whole, and complete, that's going to make you much more attractive to her than the needy, clingy, insecure version of you that she had been seeing when she dumped you. Real quick, if you like this video, hit that like button. It really sends a great signal to YouTube, and then they're going to show my video to more people just like you. Helps me grow my channel, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. So how long do avoidance take to come back? I said earlier that it can take a really long time, a year or more really, because they have to go through what's called the life cycle of an avoidant in order to feel comfortable enough to trust you again. Now I have done a lot of videos on attachment styles and avoidant attachment styles in particular. There's another YouTuber named Chris Siter who's definitely a better expert on the subject than I am. So I'm going to show you his life cycle of avoidant attachment style people. I'm going to show you that here on the screen. I'm going to link to Chris's YouTube channel down below in the description because it's a great resource if you're not already familiar with him. But let me walk you through the life cycle of an avoidant attachment style person so you can better understand why it takes so long, exactly how long it's going to take, and where she's at on that chart because that will determine how much more time you have to spend waiting. So the first stage of his wheel is that the avoidant desperately wants to find someone who loves them. The next stage is they find that someone. And at one point in time, that was you. They find someone and they feel like their troubles are over. Then the third stage is they begin to notice some worrying things. And again, I mentioned earlier that an avoidant and an anxious attachment style person are often drawn together. And that is definitely true. So what they begin to notice is that maybe the anxious attachment style person is a little smothering or a little needy or a little clingy or a little insecure. And they begin to get a little bit worried about that. The fourth stage is that they're thinking about leaving the relationship because of of those troubling behavior. They happen too often to such a degree that they're losing their love for you, they're losing their trust in you, and they're afraid that they're going to lose their freedom altogether. The next stage is they actually decide to leave the relationship, and they do. And in many cases, by the time they actually leave, their feelings of love for you have completely dissipated. And in many cases, they've already kind of got somebody else lined up. So it may be that they go right from one relationship to another. And to you, it seems insanely quick to jump that fast. But in their mind, it makes total sense. The next stage is that they feel a sense of great relief. And this is the reason why it takes so much longer for someone to come back who is an avoided attachment style person. It's because initially they're feeling that sense of relief and gratitude like, oh my God, I can't believe I was ever in a relationship with that guy. I'm so happy I left. And people who aren't avoidance don't have that stage, generally speaking. Or if they do, it doesn't last nearly as long as it does for the avoidant. The next stage though is they start to feel lonely. And and, you know, if they did jump into a relationship immediately after you, chances are it is a rebound relationship, which has a probably a one to three month life cycle up to 70% of the time. So chances are that relationship has already fizzled or they're already feeling the same level of concern about their losing their freedom with that person as they did for you. But they're starting to feel lonely again. They're starting to feel isolated. Understand that the avoidant always feels lonely though. And it's because they never really let anybody in. So they never develop emotional intimacy with anyone. 
month, they're always a little bit lonely because we all crave that emotional intimacy and they never let anybody have it with them. So they always kind of feel a little bit lonely. But that's especially true when they're between relationships. Then the last stage is they wonder, why can't I ever find the right person? They're not really looking at themselves, which they, of course they should be, because really ultimately they need to be in therapy dealing with the root of their childhood issues and why they learned at a young age to keep everyone at arm's length. They need to get to the root of that if they're going to stop that cycle. But a lot of times people just don't ever delve that deeply into themselves. They would rather look for an external reason to blame, in which case that could be you or other people that they've been with. But they begin to question, why can't I ever find the right person? And then the cycle just kind of repeats. But they have to go all the way through that cycle before they ever stand a chance of coming back to you. And again, before they can do that, their level of fear about being smothered and controlled by you has to go away completely. Then their level of trust in you that maybe you're a good person has to come back. And bear in mind too, that when they're leaving you and then after they've left you, they're probably creating stories in their mind to help justify their decision. They're villainizing you in many cases, not only to themselves, but probably to mutual friends as well. They're greatly exaggerating or in some cases fabricating stories about you that make you seem much worse in their mind than you really were. And that's basically, again, just to justify their decision. They need a reason to explain to themselves and to others why they left you. And so they kind of create this scenario in their head. The sad reality is they often believe their own BS. They really think that this thing is true and these reasons are true and that has to go away. They have to sort of begin to realize their own BS and that, you know, that wasn't really the case. The fear goes away, the trust comes back up, the reality of their relationship with you returns to normal. Then they begin to miss you. Then at that point, and again, this could easily be a year after the breakup, that's when they might reach out to you if you have maintained no contact successfully and worked on being the best version of you that you can be. Anyway, I hope this video helps you. I'll see you in the next video.